Okay, so we're going to discuss how to construct frequency histograms, relative frequency histograms, and cumulative frequency graphs or ogives in this video. Um, and so recall we had data on 45 sailors and their 1.5 mile runtime. And we've already put this data in Excel, so I have it here. And I'm going to be doing these histograms and graphs in Excel as well. Okay. So we've already have run through all of this and we're at the point now where we have this beautiful table, this beautiful uh, frequency distribution table, and we're ready to make some graphs um, using this information. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this table, press control C, and I'm going to put it in Excel, control V, and here's this little control control, make it match destination formatting. Okay, I'm going to make it look a little more like a table by going um, and putting borders around it and making the top row bold. Looks like the relative frequency had a little arrow that didn't copy well, so let's go ahead and delete that and just make relative frequency into a percentage. Okay. Okay, so before I get started making um, my histograms and um, cumulative frequency ogives. Um, I, I, I want to mention there is actually a shortcut built into Excel. So let's talk about that shortcut. Um, if I were to go over here and press this data, press A, and then go to insert, you see this little bars here under charts. Uh, what did it say? It says insert statistic chart. Use this chart type to show um, statistical analysis of your data. Okay, so let's press this little down pointer here. And we have a histogram. Okay, great. That, that's, that is the frequency histogram. That's actually great. Uh, I can press that. That is our frequency histogram. So that was a nice shortcut. Frequency histogram. And we can format it. Uh, we can label our axes. This is great. Um, however, notice that the boundaries that they're using are different than ours. That's because they've chosen a slightly different class width. So because their class width is slightly different, they also have different frequencies, right? We have 18, 12, uh, 7, 7, and 1. Looks like 22, 12, six, four, and one. So you see that there is a different difference here, right? And it's not that this is wrong, it's just different, right? They've chosen a different class width. The width of these bars are different, okay? So that may or may not be helpful using that shortcut. Also, if I go back over and do insert, there's another option there, uh, this guy, Pareto chart. The thing about a Pareto chart, in this case, it's okay uh, because it looks like I, it was naturally in descending order to begin with, but a Pareto chart is going to be in order and frequency distribution table or, uh, or frequency histograms are not usually uh, ordered according to their count, what Pareto charts are. So for example, if say this uh, group here, 13.6 to 14.9, say they had a ton of observations, then the Pareto chart would have put it as the second or first uh, bar, right? It, it doesn't order the x-axis. It orders basically the heights. And that's not really ideal. That's not what we're looking for. So I'm going to undo that. Okay. Um, so let's talk about now how do we actually do it? How do we do this in Excel using what we want to be using here? this table that we've already made, okay? Um, so I'm gonna highlight class boundaries, press control, then highlight frequency, okay? So this is what should be on our histogram, frequency histogram. Instead of doing this little bars up here, do these bars up here. This bar here, sure, okay? And this is great, this is what we want. Uh, one problem is that these bars aren't touching, it's very important that they touch. Okay, uh, go to quick layout, choose the, the ones that they're touching. Perfect. 
Uh, one more thing, I can highlight these bars and go to Format and outline them so that you can see the different bars. They're all touching each other. This is perfect. This is what you want to see, okay? This is a frequency histogram, okay? This is the frequency histogram. All right. So there's my frequency histogram. How do I do a relative frequency histogram? Highlight class boundaries, press control, highlight relative frequencies. Okay, go to insert the little bars again. This bars, once again, change the layout. So they're touching, highlight your bars and format them to put a little bit of an outline on them. Perfect, this is the relative frequency histogram. Okay, and you can and should play around with changing these axes labels, right? So this label should be frequency, uh, mile time, relative frequency, mile time, okay? So notice that the frequency histogram and the relative frequency histogram, they look exactly the same, except they have different um, Y axes. Right, so this is relative frequency here, and this is frequency here. All right, um, notice I also, I used class boundaries for the X axis of both of these charts. You didn't have to, you could have also chosen class midpoints. Class midpoints are also a valid choice for the X axis on histograms. Okay, so I can change it, click on the axis, right click, say select data, and edit this data here. So let me... Hmm. Edit this. Okay, I wanna be selecting these class boundaries or class midpoints and press okay. Okay. Perfect. So now I have the midpoints instead of the boundaries, okay? labeling the um, axes, and that's fine. The only thing that's not okay, so you can choose the midpoints or the boundaries, but you cannot choose class limits, okay? Because of the gap between the lower and upper class limits, that's not really there, that's just there for convenience when we're trying to calculate the frequency. So you cannot use class limits when you are constructing these graphs. You can only use class boundaries or class midpoints. So, all right, let's go ahead and lastly, let's construct our ogive or our cumulative frequency graph. So I'm gonna highlight class boundaries once again, press control and highlight cumulative frequency. Go to insert and this time instead of it being a bar graph, I'm gonna do a line graph. Press down on that. You can just use the first line graph option. Great, so here we go. This is our ogive or cumulative frequency graph. All right, so I have my three graphs. 